Rejection hurts, but it has its uses. Hello and welcome back to my writing journey. I'm Ellen Byram, author of Crook Tales for Two, which is now available as an ebook and in trade paperback. Which proves that even though it feels like writing takes forever, we can eventually cross that finish line. I hate this cliche, but it's true. Writing is a marathon and not a sprint. There are days that life gets in the way and other days we get in our own way. Today, I'm taking a look at rejection. Rejections come in small and large packages. But rejection isn't just for writers or the creative community. It visits almost everyone. There are jobs we don't get, plans that don't work out, competitions in which we don't place, grants that pass us by. Today's rejections, spinning out of an anonymous computer, are usually not as terrible as rejections were in the past that you read about in books, such as the writer who submitted a story and received back an envelope full of ashes. That's so creative and so cruel. Here's the important thing. Being rejected is not always terrible. It can be character building, and you may be grateful for it someday. I've known people who have had so much early success that their golden days are behind them. They come to believe that everything they write is perfect and cannot be touched. So much for editors. Soft characters who can't take anyone saying no to them. I have known playwrights who are told once, no, or their play is rejected, or they receive what they consider to be harsh feedback and decide never to write again. I suppose that could be a positive thing if the writer or artist realizes their work was not good enough and never will be. It was simply a youthful dream and a process of growing up. How many writers turn out a draft and believe it's perfect and therefore they will never rewrite it instead of waiting for the world to come to their door and offer them riches? I've known those writers. That's just inviting rejection in. I had a friend once who was so weirdly shy, she could not put her work out there. She could not schmooze. She could not play the game. It was as if she waited for someone to knock on her door and say, Hello, do you have a screenplay or novel or I can read and buy? Something like that happened only once in the history of the universe. And it was Margaret Mitchell for Gone with the Wind. She'd been working on it for 10 years and some editor I think it was Maxwell Perkins, but I could be wrong, caught wind of it, went to her door, and asked for the manuscript. This does not happen in today's world. Let's look at rejection. First of all, rejection sucks. It doesn't make you feel good. So have your pity party for a day, but no longer, or you run the risk of annoying everyone you know. Rejection makes you question your worth or your skill. That can be a good thing, a positive thing. Maybe you do need to improve. Maybe you need to work harder and take that story or that book and rewrite it and polish it. You may be rejected now because something is better for you and just waiting around the corner or next week or next year. Or realistically, with rejection, the fix may be in for someone else. That happens in the working world and no doubt in the art world. A job is wired for another candidate, but it has to be advertised, and employers go through the motions of interviewing a dozen candidates to satisfy certain requirements. And then they can hire the person they wanted in the first place. Yeah, that sucks too. Let's not forget that rejection in love hurts, and you know you're cuter, better, and smarter than the one they chose over you. But a broken heart is part of the human process. And with time, you can see what a skunk they were or think about what a boring life you would have had if they chose you. Think about how terrible that would be and the nightmare you escaped. Also, you can use that kind of rejection in your fiction. You can plot how to get even, how to win bigger and better fish. I suppose there are people who don't get rejected. Those charmed winners in life are not my concern. It's the rest of us who I care about. I care about how we cope. If you submit your work often enough, you will get to the point that your reaction isn't, am I not good enough? And changes to, you're lost, buddy. You seriously went with the other person? 
you get to the point where you can take each rejection in stride. But it especially sucks when they don't reject you outright. Are you so unimportant that you don't even rate a rejection? I entered a story competition a couple of years ago to a short story anthology, and of course I thought it was perfect. The story had to be set in a state contiguous to the location of this particular conference. I knew the location well, and I nailed it. But I knew the odds didn't favor me. Lots of people I knew were getting rejections. I waited for mine and it never came. I knew my story had been passed over when they announced the chosen writers for the story collection. Apparently they thought my offering was so bad they couldn't graciously say, thank you for your submission, better luck next time. Rejections teach you lessons. For instance, I'll never submit to that kind of anthology again. It's not a matter of quality. It's a matter of manners, of etiquette, of being recognized. Lesson learned. A few more thoughts. Rejections can make us give up. Or rejections can spur us on to work harder or smarter to rethink our priorities. Rejections can make you resolute. One thing I'd like to see is an anthology of rejected stories that are great but simply didn't meet the narrow requirements of the publication. Each story could be followed by a small note, rejected by Ellery Queen, or rejected by Alfred Hitchcock, or whichever publication failed to see the brilliance of that story and the promise. I'd buy that anthology. Once the pain of rejection fades, you can think more about it, use it to inspire you. I've read more than a few stories and novels where an editor is dispatched after rejecting someone's brilliant work. It's a very popular plot device. If you like this video and don't feel rejected, you can comment or like this. If you see it on YouTube, please subscribe and we can explore the writing process together. That's all I have for today, and I'll see you next week. Bye!